Hey guys, um, sorry this came so late, but as promised, I'm finally doing the Q&A with Mr. Moke. So this is my husband, Kevin. Say hi. Oh. Um, so we're just going to run through some of your questions. Uh, I originally wanted to do like five to 10, but I ended up only getting like 10 or 11 questions. So I'm just going to ask all of your guys' questions that you have for him. Um, so he's going to answer these pretty much on the fly. So, um, you know, bear with us if it takes a little while, we're going to try and get through all of them in one video. And so I'm going to start, um, with the first question is from awesome nine eleven. is soul sleep biblical? Um, just with that, I hate, I didn't really look into it too much. So like I actually did kind of touch up on it and I think it'd be best. I don't believe in it, but I think if you really want to know, I want to touch up on that. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So we did like a mini Bible study. Um, I will do a video on that separately because it's not really something that I ever look too deep into because people don't really talk about it all that often, but I have heard that argument before about soul sleep. <clears throat> um, looking into it, yeah, I agree with him. It's, it, I don't think it's biblical and I'll give you, I'll give you some um, backing for that in a separate video. And so bear with us, awesome 911. And question number two is from Terry. What is your experience with the institutional church? What's so your team brought some up? Yeah, like what? the church, like the building. When we went to church, what was it like for you going to church? Oh, well I just like the fact of being able to all come together and worship and spend yeah. time with like brothers and sisters I think that was like my favorite thing of all but if you're not touching up on the gospel properly then it defeats the whole purpose yeah the fellowship is is a nice thing but it's pretty useless if you have the wrong gospel which is kind of what we went through right yeah and the thing with our church was that there was a lot of secretly competing with each other yeah so it was like we were almost like kind of like on edge all the time like trying to be really yeah. righteous and just try and almost one up someone that we did this yeah like we're good we went out and handed out tracks on this day because we we attended mostly legalistic churches and so it was always kind of like you were getting the side eye from other people they're watching what you're doing yeah <laughs> judging you quietly um Let's move on. Uh, Terry had another question. Uh, she wanted to know what your views on eschatology are, so your end time views, if you have a set view, <clears throat> maybe like, wait, if you believe in a preacher rapture, no. Well, no, I don't believe in preach, uh, pre preacher trip. rapture. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm not fully like, just with revelations, there's so much to like it's actually a short chap well short book sorry and it's just i haven't it's, really I mean, not that long but in examine depth. it yeah. thoroughly but i don't see a pre-trip at all this is my opinion like and it's we're just waiting on the lord and savior yeah i i agree and then that's it like a thief in the night I would say the same thing. Um, I'm not pre-trib either. Uh, we kind of both came to that conclusion in our first church, actually. During Bible studies, we, we just weren't seeing it. Um, I, I don't really have a super set view on the end times, because like you're saying, Revelation, even though it's not it's not a super long book, it is a really in-depth book, so it definitely requires like some, some hardcore studying. Um, uh, just to add one thing to that, if you have something you want to share, like send me some verses like i'll always yes. i'm always open to looking at bible in a different like different as long way. as it's not like butting heads with the actual being saved with the gospel i'm all for it yeah to uh study and like i don't want to be that oh brush everyone aside like this is my way and that's it yeah, we're not trying to be um, like stubborn or die on that hill. So if you have a different view, comment down below um, what your eschatological views are and why. And okay, so let's move on. Ben had asked, where did you guys meet? Uh, we met online, started chatting, just finding things 
a lot in common. Just goals in life kind of matched and hit. We hit it off, and now we're married. And here we are, <laughs> almost eight years later. So yeah. it's been a wild ride. Um, the next question is from Karen. She's asking, did you ever think you would give your life to Christ in such an immersive way? I'm going to reword this. I think what she means is when you're younger, did you ever imagine yourself being so passionate about the gospel and about Jesus Christ? Did you think you were going to believe the gospel and just go hard on it? <laughs> no. And a lot to do with that is I grew up in the world and a lot of our entertainment, music, movies, even books... Oh. It kind of mocks the whole, well, just being Christian in general. So it's not exactly, I would say, it's not taught as being, I guess, cool. Yeah, we were really conditioned and programmed as kids. Honestly, if you yeah. look back, um, just in media and everything, and I, I'm not trying to like harp on media and stuff. I love movies and kids, like the shows I watched growing up, but um, it definitely you know, kind of pits the average person against the Bible and against Jesus Christ by uh, presenting it in a bad light. So, yeah, good point. Um, Lasse asks, what is your favorite hobby or favorite activity uh, when you have time? <laughs> to be honest, I have a really busy life. I'm very thankful. I Spending time with my kids and my wife even just traveling, even going into the city, I think is one of my favorite things. Just spending time with the family because I do put a lot of time and effort in work. So any free time is always a, good, a great time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard for us as a family of five to coordinate our schedules with him working, the kids going to school, they have swim lessons, things like that. Um, but when we do have our weekends together it's it's really nice we like to spend time as a family doing all kinds of stuff so it's hard to pin it down just one thing um what is your favorite bible verse currently this is also by lasse actually asks like four questions so well uh philippians 4 13 is one of my favorites i could do all things in christ which strengthens me it's this oh it's just one of those verses that just speaks to me and I've been through ups and downs and I like to just go back to that amongst other th chapters and verses but yeah 413 yeah that's definitely an encouraging verse that's yeah, a good one it's got me through I know it helped you through a lot yeah we've had a rough go um and he's also asking what is your favorite book in the bible um it's kind of hard, <laughs> but what I, what I do is a lot of times if I'm feeling a certain way, like getting up or I'm unhappy or I'm angry or I'm stressed, and I'll go to certain uh, just books in the Bible, like obviously, oh, well one of them is uh, Philippians, and then I do really enjoy Daniel, Psalms, Psalms, yeah. Psalms to, um, yeah, it's, I could go on for a long time, I don't know, it's just, I guess it depends on the mood, there's, yeah, certain books, yeah. I can't I think just I'm the pick same one, way. to no, be honest. I'm the same way, it kind of depends, like, what, what the vibe is, I guess, yeah. so to speak, because, you know, like sometimes I'm reading something and I'm just not, I'm not getting much from it all the times. And then other times I will get something from it. It just depends. Um, but I guess the Bible as a whole is an exciting book. Um, so what's your favorite activity in freedom since you got saved out of legalism? Uh, so it didn't start just by going one day. It just kind of gradually went. So the last church we went to it wasn't like pushed on us but it was definitely like if you did dress like say suit up or just dress very fancy like for our Sunday church they would you know give obviously great compliments but it was really like 
if he dressed a certain way, it wasn't like, I guess it was secretly frowned upon. And like, it was out to my wife that kind of put her foot down. Not necessarily she just dressed crazy or anything, but dressed more like, I guess, a normal woman. I started dress. wearing pants. So yeah, that's one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. And then just, I, I get to dress fine, uh, like how, how I used to, but yeah. how I actually like to. I used to have a bunch of piercings on my face. Well, not on my face, but on my ears. Like, I just like my earlobes for now, but like, oh, it's just, I'm like, I'm just being me. I just don't want to, this is who I am. Yeah, it's, it, it's really nice to get out of the, the legalistic mentality and kind of have the freedom to express yourself the way you did before. You know, that's the thing with, with Kevin is like tattoos, piercings, things like that. Um, it's not that the church looks at you like, oh, you, you must not be saved because you have that, but they kind of expect you to start covering it up, taking them out, and, and if you continue to wear it, it's kind of like you're worldly, right? Um, so it's nice to be able to to be ourselves for sure i agree yeah. with you on that and then there was a scenario when we just left our last church where one of our old uh, church mates really was like reacting weird when he saw me with ear piercings and he just the way he reacted the way He's like, oh, you're just gonna be like that. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I've always had piercings. I just, yeah, I took them out for your, our church. So, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Taking them out just for church and then, you know, not really wanting to do it. It's kind of like hypocritical. And I did the same thing because our church was um, women, and I, you guys have heard me talk about it before women in skirts and dresses and stuff. And then I just yeah. said, I'm. I like skirts and dresses, but if you force it on me, I don't want to do it. Like, to be honest, I'm, and so, yeah, it kind of started with me wearing pants again and getting those looks. No one said anything, but the looks were definitely there. Well, <laughs> or even our pastor, I don't believe in coincidence, pointing out about not wearing hot pink and you were wearing a hot pink jacket that day. Yeah, apparently like certain colors <laughs> are, are considered, um, distracting distracting and, and, and sinful uh which is silly but okay and then the next question we got it i didn't write it down but it's from planet mommy and she was asking what is your weirdest church experience which we just covered some of them but what was the weirdest yeah one? so we'll just be adding on to that so we didn't necessarily see it right away and they didn't obviously approach us because we got into the church already married but we made friends and they were just a girlfriend and boyfriend at the time and I could see that they cared about each other but it was the pastor and certain people would basically manipulate and try and play with their whole relationship and it was me seeing it from a I guess from a third person from afar it really rubbed me the wrong way and yeah, this playing Cupid, and this is the pastor, and just saying that you shouldn't be with someone that's not saved, and <clears throat> oh, it was, I had to see it later, I, sorry, I saw it later, but it's, it still bothers me till they, because I've, well, we've, yeah. there's been a couple relationships being broken. And it's upsetting, like, they're, no pastor should be playing matchmaker except you know if it's his own family that's one thing like he's but like at the end of the day if you have adult kids you don't you shouldn't be controlling their um relationships like it's kind of weird um because they don't necessarily want to marry who you want them to but other people in your congregation to be kind of planting the seeds of doubt in relationships is actually really sick um and, and trying to set up other people and stuff like that like you choose who should go with who i'm really glad we were already married because who knows it, like what kind of mind games it would have played with us um 
you know, maybe they wouldn't have approved of, of our relationship and tried to hook us up with other people. And a lot of cults do this. It's a cult tactic. So um, if you're in a church where they're playing matchmaker and they're telling you that um, you shouldn't be with somebody who you really care about because of whatever reason they, they think um, and that you should be with so-and-so, then I would suggest that you leave that church because it sounds very overbearing, very controlling. A church should not have that much um, control over your life. Your personal life is your personal life and your relationships are your own. Uh, but moving on from that, and then I have one more question from Many on Mission, that is Shelly, and she was asking, if you could have church, a gospel preaching church, anywhere in the entire world, and money is not, money is no object, what would, where would you do it? Uh, because I'm lazy in my backyard, but <laughs> it'd be nice to have in Say the temple in Jerusalem. Ooh, in Jerusalem, that would be cool. Just in a just temple, goes just just turn that temple just into just a <laughs> gospel. Kicks all church. those tax collectors. <laughs> yeah. So um. But have a nice big temple right in Jerusalem. Yeah, if money's not an issue, then I guess. <laughs> just rub it in the face of all the Pharisees. This is where we preach the gospel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we don't need a physical temple. We don't need a physical building. We are the church. Yeah. Um. The church is God's people, and we are doing church right now with you guys online all the time whenever we talk about Bible and we talk about Jesus Christ. So, you know, our backyard would be really, really nice because gas prices are pretty oh high. My. And Thank you, Drew, though. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little insane. But, um, yeah, the backyard would be kind of nice. For me personally, I would say, I know this isn't really Q&A for me, but I want to answer this one would be probably my hometown because I love it. I miss it. It's beautiful. And they need a gospel preaching church out there. Um, it's a really small town and they just have like Pentecostal, Catholic, Reformed, like uh, Calvinist, uh, Baptist churches, and I don't know what else, Anglican or whatever. Um, as far as I know, they don't have any correct gospel churches, like some actual legitimate church. Um, in a building with like an actual group of people. So I, I don't think it, they have one there and it'd be good to set one up. Maybe that could be a goal when we're like old. <laughs> or not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just adding more workload. Sounds like a lot of work, that's true. Yeah. We kinda wanna, you know, if we're old, we wanna retire. Anyway, so um, those are all the questions, guys. So again, if you have uh, any comments about eschatology, put it down in the comment section below. And if you have any more specific questions for Kevin, then also comment that down below and I'll just, I'll just ask him and then I'll reply to you or he can search in the comment section and give you his own response. Um, I hope you enjoyed this Q and A and I hope you enjoyed Mr. Moog and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going to do the video on, what is it? Soul sleep. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next one. God bless you.